Hello traders, it's Tuesday, March the 6th. This is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for Daily FX, here with a quick take video, which we're going to concentrate on the most fundamentally tumultuous currency out there, and that is going to be the Canadian dollar. Now, I know there's a lot more going on with... Uh, so many other currencies. Monetary policy is a critical theme. We see that uh, really rising with uh, the U.S. dollar, obviously, but also uh, the euro. Uh, the ECB doesn't seem to be at all committed to uh, normalizing monetary policy in its language, but the market sees something very different, driving the euro to uh, exceptional heights and generating a lot of speculative overindulgence, which that brings tension. Uh, we see things like protectionism, obviously very strong in Brexit and U.S. Uh, tariffs. Uh, we see concerns over growth starting to rise again. We see the uh, instances of risk trends and the reference to how it can impact various asset classes is picking up. These are just a few of the major themes out there. And a lot of the benchmark currencies are feeling these impacts, but they're usually just feeling some of them. And the impact that it actually has is dubious because the markets cannot see the full scope of whether one theme is going to outpace the other or whether the theme itself is actually going to take serious traction. Like protectionism obviously has a great uh, mystique of uncertainty around it about how far it's going to escalate. So the likes of the euro, for example, are very unclear monetary policy and uh, the back and forth and trade threats uh, with the United States. Obviously, the dollar is very big for this. Then you have the pound, which is a fundamentally pressured currency with Brexit uh, kind of dominating and overriding a lot of the uncertainties uh, that still face the sterling. And then the Japanese yen is very exposed for risk theme. Uh, but Few are as at risk and pressured as the Canadian dollar. It is, in essence, at the eye of a fundamental hurricane going on. Uh, and it's that uncertainty that is going to make this uh, an opportunity for some that have a high risk tolerance, but a risk to trade for all those that are much more attuned to probabilities and caution. So let's talk a little bit more about the exceptional degrees of uncertainty that is facing uh, the Canadian dollar. Now, there are a lot of things going on with the Canadian dollar. All right. It actually predates our most recent headlines uh, with things like oil. Uh, oil prices, though they have been rising, have not been a boon for the Canadian dollar. Why? Because uh, the countries with which Canada, Canada ships its uh, precious resource uh, have materially dropped, uh, specifically the United States, the largest consumer of Canadian oil. And that's because the United States has actually ramped up as a major producer of that same commodity. So the need for foreign oil uh, significantly drops. So already hurt by trade relations like this isn't the only commodity with which this is happening, nor the only trade relation with which this is happening. But this was an issue in the backdrop for some time. Now, we add to that fresh concerns. Uh, and the most prominent, obviously, has been the NAFTA negotiations, or renegotiations, as they've been dubbed. Uh, NAFTA is a trade relation group uh, between, uh, well, for North America, so Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Uh, and under uh, President Donald Trump's administration, uh, there has been a push to renegotiate uh, existing trade deals which were deemed unfavorable to the United States and at the advantage of its, P its trade partners, uh, which... You know, there's debate on both sides about what's fair, what's not, but nevertheless, these negotiations are going on. Now, the outcome of this is not perceived really be good for the Canadian dollar, regardless of what the, that outcome is going to be. Either the U.S. gets what, what it wants, and Canada trying to maintain access to its largest trade partner is going to make accommodation, which is a detriment to itself, or it doesn't, and the relationship really breaks down, and Canadian, uh, Canada gets uh, a severe uh, reaction with a meaningful drop in exports uh, to its primary counterpart. So that is really not going to be a positive outcome 
one way or the other. But now we add the, the new tariffs, the, the tariff conversations, which were the dominant feature of our conversation last week and still the dominant conversation of this new week we start with. I know we have a lot going on on the docket, but it is the push uh, by President Trump and his administration uh, to introduce tariffs, very steep tariffs uh, on steel and exports specifically for now, but 25% tariff on imported steel and 10% tariff on imported aluminum. This is a thinly veiled effort at trying to hit out at China, which is, uh, by the United States account, uh, been pursuing unfair trade practices for some time to uh, launch its GDP expansion. Uh, but as it happens, these tariffs are specifically hurting Canada. I mean, they hurt a lot of countries, uh, but they specifically hurt Canada the most. Why? Again, the United States is Canada's largest trade partner. It, too, is going to feel the impact of these tariffs, plus the NAFTA renegotiations. And subsequently... It is the largest, uh, or the United States' largest uh, intake of these two particular commodities from global producers is Canada. I think it's number 11 in terms of steel from China, and number 4 in terms of aluminum from China. So this impacts Canada more. Now we heard over the weekend, uh, at, and this is actually evidence of an escalation of the trade wars and evidence that this is really not going to just fizzle out and uh, there's good reason to be confident on complacent uh, exposure. But we heard over the weekend that Donald Trump was willing to soften the tariffs on the on the metals uh, if the NAFTA re renegotiations are made and they're favorable to the United States, which, you know, either you take it in NAFTA, you take it in these particular targeted tariffs. It, it really does not bode well for Canada on either outcome. Now, this doesn't stop here either. This is going to have a material impact on trade, all right, total trade and exports as a component to GDP. Furthermore, if GDP looks uncertain, and global risks start to rise, then the subsequent impact that we would have on the possibility of a rate hike for the Bank of Canada starts to materially darken. Here we actually have the probability of a 25 point a base point rate hike by the end of the year uh, for the major central banks. Orange is the Bank of Canada. I haven't updated this as of today, but this comes under very serious concerns. And if this uh, favorable monetary policy stance for the Canadian dollar is one of the things, you know, that really hasn't helped it materially advance, uh, but it has ke kept it from tumbling, then obviously this uh, source of support is going to evaporate. Because the Bank of Canada pursuing already questionable rate hikes, uh, it's deemed itself, uh, those moves uh, questionable and uncertain because of the uh, unbalanced backdrop for the on the ec economic side, uh, they become near impossible for the Bank of Canada and subsequently we lose that lift. And furthermore, it also positions the Canadian dollar as a risky currency because it, if risk starts to collapse, it's not like the trade and protectionism relationship issues become uh, better, they only get worse. And Canada's right at the center of it. So it becomes a much more sensitive currency to risk aversion. So nothing really bodes positively for the Canadian dollar in all of this. Now, of course, there is a question as to how much has the discount to this point already accounted for the uncertainties that lie ahead for Canada and the Canadian dollar. And that's up for debate. All right, if you look at an equally weighted Canadian dollar index, uh, we actually have... Uh, we actually have a substantial slide. And technically speaking, it's cleared the bottom of a rising trend channel. Again, this is only a technical level so far as I see it. Um, not many people actually look at this particular index. Uh, if they would, I'd be surprised. But that kind of progress is actually accounted for on a lot of Canadian dollar crosses. Dollar CAD is actually one of the least of the significant moves. You look at the Canadian dollar yen cross, all right, huge move, or Eurocad, critical breakout, 
pushing towards multi-year highs. Actually, on a closed basis, it will hit multi-year highs with the session close. Uh, the pound cat uh, squirting out of a rising wedge with a positive breakout. All right, all of these critical, these are the most liquid Canadian dollar crosses, uh, are marking very serious losses for the Canadian dollar. So we already have arguably priced in a significant uh, depreciation. Perhaps that's enough, uh, but I would not bank on that. That is a very risky insinuation because if the trade negotiations take a particularly sour turn, then the Canadian dollar has a lot more uh, that it could lose. Whether you're looking at the pound CAD or whether you're looking at the dollar CAD, there is a lot more range for it to swing to the downside. So. This is the most fundamentally at-risk major currency in my book right now, and that can confer a lot of volatility. It can certainly raise the likelihood that we do see a substantial swing in the currency one way or the other, but it also makes it somewhat risky to trade. Uh, and I know that there are confidence, uh, our confidence in picking outcomes for major fundamental events like this is probably pretty high. We are speculators uh, by nature, so we assume that our outlook is correct. But I, w I warn you now that it's when you have this great this degree of uncertainty, uh, it should be treated much more cautiously if avoided if uh, altogether, if uh, we don't have a very, very clear bead on what our expectations are. So be mindful of this. Some critical technical moves, and for many that may not be up to date on what's happening on the fundamental side, this might look attractive. Uh, but there is a problematic side to this, a very uh, difficult to trade uh, speculative backdrop. All right, so just treat it with the caution it deserves. All right, we'll wrap it up here. We'll do our next quick take video tomorrow. Until then, I wish you all good luck trading out there.